Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this week's video I'm going to talk you through user-defined functions in Snowflake. Predominantly SQL ones, you can write them in JavaScript and quite recently they also released a Java version as well. But in this video I'm going to concentrate on the SQL version of those. I'm going to talk you through and give you an example of a scalar function and, what, and tell you what that is, as well as a tabular function. And we'll get hands on with some demos and I can show you how they work in the real world. I've got a number of videos that will help you if you're new to Snowflake, describing the architecture, different ways of getting data onto Snowflake as well. So I hope you find those useful. Okay, so let's get into user-defined functions in Snowflake. So if you're familiar with uh, more traditional relational databases, this concept should be very familiar to you. And there's two primary kind of functions within Snowflake. One is known as a scalar function which returns one output value for each input value. And we'll have a look at that in a second uh, in a demo. And then you've got a tabular or table function, which returns a table of zero, one, or many records for each input row. And again, I'll, I'll give you a demo of that with a, a particular use case that we can look at as well. Functions can be written in Snowflake in SQL or JavaScript. It's worth pointing out that very recently, Java was introduced as a third option. Yeah, at the time of this recording, it's uh, in preview mode, so I won't go into it in too much detail. You, you'll typically be working with SQL um, unless you want to do any branching or looping in your function. And that's when you can extend the functionality and move away from set-based processing using SQL to look at something using JavaScript or Java. In, this, in these examples I'll give you now, we're just going to focus on the SQL variant predominantly. So now I'm going to head on over to my Snowflake environment and run through a scalar function demo for you. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do for this simple example is just to create a database called UDF. And then here's my simple user-defined scalar function. This is going to be a function to add sales tax of 10% to my net sales value. So you can see here I've got create a replace function, I have the name of the function, I have the name of the input parameter along with the associated data type. The value of the data type that it returns, in this case it's a float. And this is my SQL statement here where I'm taking the net sales value and I'm multiplying it by 1.1 to add 10% in the net sales value. So let's just run that and create our database and function. Okay, so now I've successfully created the add sales tax function. I'm now going to create a simple table with one column just to store net sales values as a decimal data type. I'm calling the table sales. I'm inserting these sample four records into there. And you can see there's net sales values going in there. Now I want to be able to Query this table and apply the scalar function we've just created to add the sales tax, tax to it. We select, it's a basic SQL, ANSI SQL uh, select statement. So we're selecting the net sales column. We're applying the function in this way. Again, not too dissimilar from other more traditional relational uh, databases in terms of the syntax. We put, give it the function name. We pass in the value from our sales table. So if I run that, we can see we get our raw net sales value directly from the table as we inserted it. And then we get our column with the 10% sales tax added to it. Okay, next we're gonna look at uh, table functions. Let me just quickly give you an overview of what these are all about. <clears throat> so they're very powerful and as the name suggests, uh, rather than just returning a single value like we just got, saw with the scalar function, it can return a result set in a tabular format so imagine um, a scenario where you develop an application based on top of the data within Snowflake and you're going to need to pass a customer ID into the function and return the customer's address. So again, quite a common use case. Um, it's uh, appropriate to use a, a table function. There's probably a million ways that you could do this, but I'm going to use this for, for my example. So let's head on over to Snowflake and take a look at what this looks like. Okay, so now we're in Snowflake. Let me just format this query. Okay, so what we've got here is a, a table function. So I've created or I've replaced function. This is my table function, get address for customer. You can see here I'm accepting that customer ID from my application. 
varchar16 in this case is the data type. It returns, in this case, crucially a table. You then specify the column names and data types of the table it's going to return. And you can see here, here's my select statement. So I'm leveraging the sample data within the Snowflake um, database. And this comes with the trial editions as well. So you can uh, give this a shot by all means. I'm um, just joining a customer and customer address tables together. And importantly, I am using the value customer ID that I'm passing in here to restrict the records that customer ID. In this case, I'm passing back some uh, details with regards to the address. Again, you could do formatting on this and so on. Um, to, in an enterprise environment, you typically do that. But for the sake of this example, we're just going to pass back the columns as is and not kind of do any null check-in or anything like that. So let's create our function. And then this is how we call it. So basically, we're just selecting the column names as we've defined them within our function. From, and then we specify the table, pass in the function name, and then pass in the customer ID input value. In this case, we've picked one at random. And imagine this is the application calling the table function. We execute that and we can see then we get the street number, name, city, state, and zip code for that particular customer relating to that customer ID. And that will get passed back to the application and surface via the application to uh, the person using it. So hopefully that gives you a good example of scalar and tabular functions. Again, if you find this channel useful, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a like and subscribe and hit the bell icon for new content coming soon.